Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to Finite Element Methods. In the last class, we have learned about strings. So let us learn about the constitutive relations in the present class. What are constitutive relations? The coupling of stress and strain will give us a relation. That relation is called the constitutive relation. So, in the case of linear elastic case, we can directly relate the stresses and strains in this fashion. That is, we can relate sigma with epsilon with some stiffness tensor, where that stiffness tensor is a fourth order tensor, where this sigma is a second order tensor, this epsilon is a second order tensor, and this c is a fourth order tensor. So, this fourth order tensor See, I am mentioning this as a tensor. That is, this fourth order tensor also will obey the same transformation rule that we have mentioned for sigma and epsilon in the earlier classes. So, if you observe here, we are having i, j, k, l. We are having four free indices in the case of C. So, that is why it is a fourth order tensor. So, how many components does this C will be having? Will be having 3 power 4 will be having 81 components for this C. How many components for sigma? We are having 3 square, nothing but 9 components. How many components for epsilon will be having 3 square again? It will be having 9 components. So now, since the stress is symmetric, we are taking the symmetric stress and the strain inherently is symmetric. So these 9 components will be reduced to 6. And again, the 9 components of epsilon also can be reduced to 6. So in a similar fashion, if you see this C, there is a symmetricity in I and J because stress is symmetric. And there is symmetricity in K and L. So that is why this is also symmetric. These two indices are symmetric and these two indices are symmetric. And there is some energy criteria that for the case of hyperelastic materials, the C will be having major symmetry. That is C i j k l is equal to C k l i j. That symmetry also holds. That is why in the matrix form, this entire tensor notation can be represented as sigma is equal to C times epsilon. In the matrix notation, we can represent that in this fashion. Since stress is symmetric, it will be having six components. Strain is symmetric, six components. So how many components does this C will be having now? It will be having six by six, nothing but 36 components. So these are the 36 components. Where the notations, uh, see here, this is sigma ij, this is epsilon ij. Now, I am relating, I am writing this expression in the in the, in the matrix format. This notation, this tensor notation in the matrix format. So, how I am writing this matrix? This is sigma ij is nothing but c ij kl, epsilon kl. Let us fix this i and j now. That is, let us say i is 1, j is 1. That is sigma 1, 1. Sigma 1 1 is represented as C11 KL epsilon KL. And this K and L you are having summations. So that is why and K runs from 1 to 3 and L runs from 1 to 3. So you will get these components. That is, sigma 1 1 and epsilon 1 1 are related as if I put a K and L as 1 1, then this will be C1111. That is C1111. In a similar way, if sigma 1 1 is related to epsilon 2 2, this is epsilon 2 2, that is related with the constant C 1 1 2 2. This is C 1 1 2 2. Similarly, the relation with sigma 1 1 and epsilon 3 3 is sigma 1 1 and epsilon 3 3 is C 1 1 3 3. C 1 1 3 3. Like that, we can populate the entire matrix of C. What is C? C is nothing but the stiffness tensor. C is a stiffness tensor. So how many components does C is having? We are having 36 components. Now, in fact, there are 81 elastic constants. I have already mentioned that. We are having C i j k l is a fourth order tensor. So that is why we will be having 3 power 4, nothing but 81 components are there in C. Now because of symmetricity of sigma, and symmetricity of epsilon, these 81 components has been boiled down to 36 components that we have just represented in the matrix form. 
so this is the matrix form how many components we are having 36 now strain symmetry stress symmetry this will reduce to 36 now we will be having this energy symmetry also so because of this energy symmetry whatever the c we got here whatever the c we got here this is again symmetric that is the c1122 is nothing but c2211 and c1133 c3311 c1123 is nothing but c2311 that is even these terms are also symmetric so finally the number of independent constants reduced to 21 so from 81 we boil down to 21 components because of stress symmetry strain symmetry and because of energy so now in the tensorial form what i can write is c i j k l is nothing but this stress symmetry that is i j is equal to j i so this is c j i k l and strain symmetry this is k l this k l can be represented as l k this is stress symmetry strain symmetry and because of energy c i j k l can be represented as c k l i j this is called the major symmetry and these are called the minor symmetries so if you see the notations here we are having four indices so writing four indices is very cumbersome it's very difficult that's why we are having some notation called the void notation so in the case of void notation to eliminate redundancies the contracted form is called the void notation and that void notation can be represented as this ij is represented with a single index m and this scale is represented with another single index n and wherever 1 1 appears that is represented with 1 2 2 with 2 to 3 3 3 with 3 and either 2 3 or 3 2 with 4 3 1 or 1 3 with 5 1 2 or 2 1 with 6 so with this contracted notation i can represent my stress tensor as sigma 1 1 is sigma 1 sigma 1 2 as sigma 6 see here sigma 1 2 is sigma 6 and sigma 1 3 is sigma 5 similarly sigma 2 1 is again sigma 6 and sigma 2 2 is sigma 2 and sigma 2 3 is sigma 4 similarly sigma 5 sigma 4 and sigma 3 so this is a contracted notation that is instead of writing two indices again and again two indices has been contracted to single index so this is the contracted notation or the void notation the similar exercise we can do for the strain also where this can be written as epsilon 1 epsilon 6 by 2 epsilon 5 by 2 why does this 2 came this 2 came because these are the actual strains and this entire by 2 will represent the engineering shear this is the this epsilon 6 is the actual shear now in this contracted notation i can represent my constitutive relation in this fashion which is very very easy to look and easy to write also so here we wrote four indices instead of writing four indices it has been contracted to two indices and it is very simple also and if you if you want me to represent this one in the tensorial form this can be represented as sigma i is nothing but c i j epsilon j which is very very simple so this is the contracted form so now we are having 21 independent constants so can we reduce these 21 independent constants further this is the question so we can reduce in fact so how can we reduce this the existence of crystal symmetries will reduce the elastic constants more that is if you take a material if you take any metal so there will be having some inherently some symmetries that is if you take iron fcc or bcc or hcp whatever whatever the structure it is it will be having some inherent symmetries that is if you rotate the crystal according to along some diagonal or if you reflect that one so any of these rotations or reflections will reduce your elastic constants because they will be repeated even you rotate the stress tensor or the stiffness tensor won't change so we can explore these symmetries as well that is why in the case of triclinic which is not at all symmetric there is it is of center symmetry we need all 21 constants but in the case of cubic the tensor is invariant of threefold rotation around the four diagonals of the cell. So, in the case of cubic, if you take a cubic cell, so you will be having four diagonals, four inside diagonals, not the face diagonals. So, for these diagonals, if you rotate a threefold rotation, if you rotate the crystal by three times, you will get the you will you will be reflected the same shape. You will be having the same shape, the shape won't change. So that is why you can explore these rotations. 
then by applying these rotations on the stiffness tensor which is a fourth order tensor so that will be reduced with only three constants so this is how the cubic symmetry looks like in the contracted notation these are six and these are the six strains six stresses now the stiffness tensor if you observe you will be having the independent ones are c11 c12 and c44 only we are having three independent elastic constants in the case of cubic symmetry so the transformation of the fourth order tensor as i already told you so this c is a fourth order tensor so to qualify that as a tensor it has to satisfy this transformation rule so for a fourth order tensor the transformation rule looks like this in the case of initial rotation so it is c prime ijkl that is your stiffness tensor in the prime coordinate system is represented as qim qjn qkp qlq c mnpq so this is your actual stiffness tensor in the unprimed system and this is the stiffness tensor in the primed system so if you apply these rotations on the unprimed system then you will get the coordinates of the stiffness tensor in the primed system and where you can expand this very simply so we are having the repeated indices so m is repeated n is repeated p is repeated and q is repeated so where they will run from 1 to 3 as well as i j k l or the free indices where those free indices will match with the lhs so this is the transformation rule for the fourth order fourth order tensor since our stiffness tensor is a fourth order tensor it has to satisfy this transformation rule so now strain as a function of stress until now we have written the relations stress as a function of strain now can we invert this that is if the stress is given can we calculate strain is it possible yes of course it is possible so how can we write that one epsilon ij is nothing but s ij kl sigma kl where this s is called the elastic compliance tensor which is an elastic compliance tensor again that is also fourth order tensor analogous to c ij kl s ij kl also obeys the transformation rules that is whatever the transformation law i have written for the c just now for the prime and prime the similar transformation rule will be obeyed by the s also simply s is the inverse of c in fact so this is the transformation rule for s and the symmetries of the crystal are applicable to s also that is what of the cubic symmetry i have written just now for c that is applicable even for s that is if we invert the relation constitute a relation then s also will be having only three independent constants for the cubic symmetry and in the contracted notation epsilon i is nothing but s i j sigma j and in the expanded form it can be represented as we are having six independent strains and six independent stresses and total six by six matrix of compliance where this is again symmetric so we will be having 21 independent compliance terms for cubic symmetries s11 s12 s44 are the three independent components so in the matrix form sigma is nothing but c times epsilon or epsilon is nothing but s times sigma so if you have from these relations what you can infer is c times s is nothing but identity so s is nothing but c inverse that is you can get the compliance tensor by inverting c so you have to take the inverse of the fourth order tensor note in the above notations c and s are not the components of the second order tensors remember we have reduced the notation we have used the reduced notation so that doesn't mean that c and s nature or change it to second order tensors it doesn't mean that c and s are always fourth order tensors but we have used the reduced notation so that is what we are writing here so in the above notation c and s are not the components of the second order tensor despite their appearance they look like second order tensors but they are not they are always fourth order tensors with two indices this must be taken into account in problems for rotations so by rotating c and s we need to take care we need to treat them as fourth order tensors instead of second order tensors we need to be very careful stress strain for isotropic systems so until now we have seen the anisotropic systems that is cubic anisotropy we have seen three independent constants for the case of triglinic we will be having 21 independent constants like that so now what about the isotropic systems the elastic constants needed to describe an isotropic medium will be invariant to rotations of 45 degrees around the coordinate axis so because of this property the number of independent constants for an isotropic medium are only two so what are those two independent constants we can represent stresses six independent stresses six independent strains now if you see this matrix we will be having only two independent constants that is c11 and c12 are the two independent constants where these terms are filled with the differences between them c11 minus c12 by 2 and c11 minus c12 by 2 and c11 minus c12 by 2 and the remaining terms are 0 
So we are having only two independent constants for the case of isotropic systems. So for isotropic case, the tensor form is, we can represent the tensor form for the isotropic case like this. That is sigma ij is equal to mu epsilon ij plus lambda delta ij epsilon kk, where this i and j runs from 1 to 3. So, and this mu is called the rigidity modulus, and this lambda and mu together are called the Lamis constants. Lambda comma mu are Lamis constants, and this epsilon ij is the strain tensor, this delta ij is the Kronecker delta. That is, it will pop up value of 1 if i equal to j, otherwise it is 0. If i not equal to j, it is 0. And epsilon kk represents epsilon 1, 1 plus, epsilon 2, 2 plus, epsilon 3, 3. That is, it, this represents the trace of the strain. So, this is the constitutive law for the isotropic case. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Akita. Subscribe to Akita.